being able to do paleontology in a, such a remote place that we know so little about because most of the surface of Antarctica is ice covered, we're actually filling in an important um, gap in our knowledge about the history, the geological history of the Earth. Um, so we have this large continent, uh, the past of which is, is very obscure and there are very few places you can get to it. Um, in, the, in these mountains that actually poke up above the ice, we have a little bit of that geological record. So we can start understanding the geological history of Antarctica sort of in a global context. We wanted to do an, an exhibit that was Antarctic dinosaurs, but wouldn't just be an exhibit on Antarctica wrapped around an, a dinosaur exhibit. Um, so the way we sort of solve that challenge, I think, is we try to bring the visitor um, back in time and then forward in time. So you come into the exhibit, um, you get the feeling that you're traveling down yourself. There's some large murals that show scenery from Antarctica. You get to sit on a mock-up airplane of the kind we use down there. You get to see some of the gear and then we take you back in time to see some of the fossils and the environments of the past with their animals and plants. And then we bring you forward uh, in time again to sort of experience the excavation work in Antarctica. So we use a lot of visuals, you know, short of putting you at 12 and a half thousand feet in, in, in minus 10 degree weather, we've tried to be as faithful to that and I think uh, really sort of brought that message home. And then after you've had that sort of um, experience of being there, you get pulled back into time into where we are now when you can actually see the fossils we excavated um, and then recreations of those animals in their environments um, based on, on other fossil evidence we have.